Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Zhou. And I'm Roger Berman. And you're listening to Works, works for, for Us, us <laughs> where we talk to people about what works for them in their relationships. And of course, what doesn't. Today, we're talking about what works for you, our listeners. This episode is all about you because you've all been amazing. We haven't been doing this podcast for very long, but we already feel so incredibly supported. So thank you so much for all of that because whether it's been through an Instagram comment or a review on Apple Podcasts or a voicemail you've left us, you all have been so responsive to the show in the most incredible way. And we love it. So that's why today we're taking the time to answer your questions and share your feedback with the rest of our audience. We want to start off with the stories you've been sharing with us about your own relationships. If you follow us on Instagram at works.for.us, you may know that we ask our followers questions that relate to our episodes each week. And after our best friends episode with Sarah Foster and Jen Meyer, we asked Who is your oldest, truest friend, and when did you meet them? Let me just say your responses kind of floored me. It's incredible how many of our listeners had true, long-lasting relationships. So I just want to share some of those here. Okay, so Lynx09 said, I have three besties, two I've known since kindergarten and one since third grade. We give the one from third grade a hard time as she's the newbie. We're 63. LOL. Aren't we so lucky? That's amazing. 60 years later, they're like, no. That is incredible. Actually, babe, that's totally going to be you. By the way, that is me. My that two, is you. My two best friends, or you know, two of my best friends, I sat next to in kindergarten. And what we all have in common is the girl that sat between us peed in her pants every single day. And we still <laughs> laugh about that. That and is so mean. You're like a mean kid. No, I mean, we were you four. You can't laugh. The people but like who that's do how that. long we, like we're Maybe so she had problems. But we're well, she, I don't know if she had problems. She was four, but I guess what I'm saying is it really puts things in perspective. When you're friends, now you're talking about like what wine you want at dinner and or we what were, companies you want or to what companies in. you want to invest in. And at the time, we were talking about like I got I, I, I bet John or Harley know her, remembers her. John probably remembers her name. I don't know her name, but I just remember her like like a puddle coming down and like the teacher had to like take her out honestly she's probably still traumatized from that and never wants to see you again so please well, i hope did you I'm not the- see that episode of friends with julia roberts and chandler yeah she came back to get him and that'll happen to you so don't mention any names right, let's hear more about uh reader okay. feedback here i'm gonna go for the next one if okay. that's okay with you butterbean 1928 said She's my first roommate out of high school. I was 18, 1973. She was 16. 47 years later, we're still best friends. That's so That's, cute. I guess sweet. I'm not sure who's uh, screening these uh, these <laughs> calls or these, uh, you know, 47 years. Eh, it's fine. It's not so a great. slacker? You don't find that impressive? Kind of a slacker. Really? Uh, it's fine. Roommates for a long time. Okay. Um, MPS 7029 said, met my oldest and dearest friend in the sixth grade when she transferred in from a different school. Still friends after marriages, kids, and a cross-country move apart. That's nice. Yeah, cute. Especially the husband's parts. Yeah. Well, you know what my dad says. What's your dad say? My dad said, if your spouses don't like each other, you will eventually drift apart. Hmm. Like if you don't like the spouse of your best friend, eventually you will drift apart. And I have seen that to be true. Correct. And Thriffy Designer shared, my best friend and I have been through thick and thin for 55 plus years. Met when we were five years old. So cute. That's you. It is. That's really going to be you. I don't have best friends from when I was five, actually. That's because you're mean and evil. No, it's because girls were mean and evil to me, actually. I'd probably have so many friends if they were nice to me. Um, but babe, who's your oldest friend? I think it, John. Well, I think it's like, I I think this is what happened. John and Harley are my oldest friends. We did go to kindergarten together, but I'm pretty sure that when we moved to our new development, the houses weren't ready yet. And we had to like start school. 
So we lived in a bungalow colony like 20 minutes away. And I kind of think I met John there at the bungalow colony That makes first. sense, actually, that you would meet John in a bungalow colony. How old is your oldest friend? Let's think about Honestly, it. Honestly, my oldest friends. Look, I have friends from when I was born that I still love, like Lauren England or now Lauren Flusser, but like not someone that like- Is in your life uh, In my much. life every day. But if I saw her now, we catch up. Like I love her for life, right? But I would say my oldest, honestly, friend that's still in my life probably is is Melissa and Emily. Like Emily, who my two girlfriends in New York, who, you know, when I met my literally my first day of college or the day before. And I disagree. And Melissa, There's older ones. when I met you, Dory certainly is older. That's true. Dory. Oh my God. Dory would be my oldest friend. You're totally right. From when I was 12, mm -hmm. she moved from, I think, Canada to Short Hills where I grew up and she got on the school bus and said, you're really pretty. Can I be your friend? And, and we said, literally no, were you friends. Can't, bitch. No, I said, sit down next to me. Of course you can. Oh, you, how well do you know me? I was like, sit down, you know? And, um, and we were actually best friends from that point on. And then, you know, she still lives in New York or pretty much all over the world, <laughs> but, you know, and she's still very much in my life. So yeah, Dory would be my oldest friend mm -hmm. for sure. And she has a new baby, not even new. Oh God. I have two, two friends that had babies on their own because they wanted to be moms. Sure. I hear you. I respect it. God, do I respect it. <laughs> All right, so we also got some great feedback about that same episode as well, and I think we'd like to play a voicemail. We actually have a voicemail. That's how high-tech we are at this show. Hi, it's Trisha Fowler from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I just wanted to say I loved your podcast the other day. I listened to the Best Friends podcast with Jennifer Meyer and Sarah Foster. It was amazing. I cried. I oh, It was very identifiable. It was the perfect pick-me-up after a long day of work, working with elder care and Holocaust survivors and uh, providing free home care. And it was the exact thing I needed to escape the day. So thank you. Congratulations. Married 20 years this August to the love of my life. So thank you so much. And just keep going. I can't wait to continue listening. Take care. Bye. Wow. Oh, my God. That obviously made me all like choked up Trisha. i'm surprised you're not sobbing because you're usually really the big crier he cried at our son's belt test karate belt t uh taekwondo belt test this morning. i had him something crying. in my eye uh, the tree really yeah it's okay. a lot of pollen outside i have allergies rachel so okay. let's move on Wait, Trisha's Trisha. voicemail. we love you trisha we can't really speak to you apparently because like we said we we can't afford two-way communication yet <laughs> only voicemail <laughs> but we're going to respond like this first of all I think that Rachel really loved that because she now knows that Montreal is in Quebec, Canada. So that's Montreal's in Quebec. Yeah, see, I knew that Rachel would learn something from this episode. Yeah. I know Montreal's in Canada. Well, Quebec would be a province. You know, there's provinces in Canada, just like there's states. In of course I know that. Okay, so everyone who's listening, Obviously. it's nice that uh, Montreal is Quebec. I thought that you would find that interesting, Rachel. Wait, I wonder, point Patricia. It out. I want to say that's incredible because the reason I love hearing this is because clearly you have a very impactful and meaningful job that you do every day. And Roger and I, I don't want to speak for him, but I will, are so honored that you take the time to listen to our podcast and that it's doing exactly what we really want it to do, which is provide, you know, an hour escape for people in their day. Um, to just listen to whenever and just get a little laugh or try and kind of identify with a part of it or what we're talking about or the relationship topic of the day, whatever it is. But thank you for the work that you're doing. It's certainly way more meaningful than what we're doing over here. That's but we're for sure. so happy that we kind of gave you a little smile at the but end Rachel, of the day. But Rachel, I keep going back to, we're doing life's, we're doing God's work here, Rachel. You could just see, because people, you know, people need an escape. She's working very hard and a very serious topic, obviously. Trisha, you're amazing. I, I just, I can't believe that, you know, I, I had the same reaction in the Rachel's Old Project. Like, I cannot believe you're wasting an hour of your time listening to me. <laughs> That's God really great, damn it, great. Trisha. Thank you so much. And it's a <laughs> risk. And it paid off for you. So, Wow, what a good bet. Really, Thank you, Trisha. Babe, it's really amazing that you're you're such a good advocate for our business. 
brand. It's really good that I put you out in front of people. You know, apparently people like transparency these days. Well, Trisha, by the way, for what it's worth, Aaron and Sarah's episode is one of my all-time favorites, and they are by far my favorite best friends. So um, I'm so glad you enjoyed the episode, and I'm glad it made you smile, and we hope you continue to listen. And call again, please. Yeah. Let us know that you love our episodes every single time. (laughs) It never gets old. So you've been asking some fantastic questions. And while we're not experts, as we always say, the questions you asked were very much in our wheelhouse. So let's get into it. Summer is here. And for me, I need a razor that makes shaving simple and is extra gentle on my skin, leaving it moisturized, super smooth, and totally bump free. And honestly, the only razor that meets those standards is the Athena Club razor. I am telling you, it is hands down the best razor I have ever used. Athena Club's razor has thousands of five-star reviews and is designed with built-in skin guards and an innovative handle to help prevent razor burn while being extra gentle on curves. The blade on their razor is surrounded by a water-activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid, and hyaluronic acid is honestly the holy grail of skincare. And it's even more amazing to use the razor with Athena Club Shave Foam, which is so luxurious to use. But the biggest thing for me is that Athena Club's razor makes shaving enjoyable. It really feels like a self-care practice because it's actually benefiting my skin rather than stripping or irritating it like so many other razors. Athena Club's razor is only $9 and comes with your choice of handle color, an extra blade head, and a magnetic hook for easy shower storage. And with chic colors like coral, midnight, and rose, it will look gorgeous in your shower. I promise you. Show your skin you care with the Athena Club Razor Kit. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code ZOE. That's A-T-H-E-N-A-C-L-U-B.com with promo code ZOE for 20% off. So I went freelance when I was 25 years old, living in New York and working in fashion. And what some of you may not know is that probably 60% of the job is shipping and receiving clothes, jewelry, accessories, everything you can imagine that you would ever need for a photo shoot or anything else. The amount of time that I have spent over my very long career and my team has spent over my very long career as a stylist and in the fashion business, packing, shipping, receiving, sending, waiting for people to pick things up and send things out. Thank goodness there is something like stamps.com because stamps.com literally changes the game for not just my business, but for any small business because the amount of time that we spend going to post offices and shipping facilities and all of these things, stamps.com really saves so much time and money and just makes the entire process easier so you can spend more time focusing on your business. I am so grateful to stamps.com. No wonder over 1 million businesses choose stamps.com for their mailing and shipping. All you really need is your computer and you'll be able to print official US postage 24 seven for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you wanna send it. Once your mail's ready, just schedule a pickup or drop it off. It's that simple. So if you're looking to save both time and money, and again, if you're a business owner, you should be. I highly suggest using stamps.com. Stop wasting time waiting in line at the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with my promo code, Zoe, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Zoe, Z-O-E. That's stamps.com, promo code Zoe, stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Hi, Rachel and Roger. Um, I wanted to say I really have enjoyed your podcast. It's been so much fun to listen to you guys. Um, 
I just want to say that uh, we, my eyes been married for 17 years and we ended up moving countries and having to, um, with a nine month old, come from England to America. And that was not easy. So um, I just want to say that I admire all your advice. And I just had a quick question, which would be, as a couple, a power couple, what do you think is your piece of advice for coming out the other side of COVID? So what would your next trip be? What would your next big dinner be? What's your next plan? Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Well. Okay, what was her name again? She didn't, didn't say, say her, her name, name, but she had we're a gonna, great English accent. We're going to so call her... We're going to call her... British woman. Let's call her British woman. Okay. So this lovely British woman, notice how she sang why she spoke. She did? Yeah, it was like a little sing song. It's like, hey, how are you doing today? I just think everything sounds better with It sounded amazing. With an also, accent. definitely calling from Europe... I think because yes. I noticed a stick shift while she was driving. It's also good to know that people are multitasking and not r- truly wasting their time just concentrating Honey, on maybe calling we're us. Ser- she moved here, so she's in the U.S. Oh, she oh she's in the, in, US? in the U.S.? She, she moved from the U.K. So- well, she did say she drove a lot. Do you think she drove across the ocean? I don't think you can do that, honey. Well, you can on a ferry. Right. So my question is, my question is. What was her question again? Her question was, what's her advice for a couple... Coming, coming out, of, out COVID. of COVID. And my answer to that is, well, I think mine and Roger's answers would be p- pretty different because he's been like a caged animal and I've been happy as I clam. think I have a great analogy. <laughs> oh, I think no. I have a great analogy. I'm so you know, scared you know how you go to, you know how Please you, don't scare her off. I'm not. You know how you go to a pool and some people jump right in and some people dip their toes and they just want to get adjusted to each step to the water? I would say Rachel's dipping her toes into life post COVID, and I have dove full for. Uh, I've dove full force, full force, head first. Yeah. So, what is my advice? Are you going out for dinner tonight? By the way, obviously. So basically, Roger's going out every day and night. He's gone for like fifteen hours at a time. Kids don't even notice. They think he's outside working. Um, Part of my master plan. And um, I would say my advice is from where I sit tiptoe in if you're someone who has kind of enjoyed the peace and quiet of it and the lack of social pressure, go back in lightly and pick and choose who you want to see. And Roger would say probably go out at every turn you can because you never know when the world's going to end again. I do think though, she might've been asking in another way, maybe from like a business sense also. No, I think it was a relationship. Well, sense. I, I would say also what we're noticing from a business sense is like everything's changed, opportunities everywhere. And I would say be very aggressive right now. Yeah, I think as it as it goes, I think that there's a ton of opportunity out there right now. I also think that now meeting in person, provided you know you're vaccinated and you feel safe, is so much more meaningful now. Yeah, we had an in person like lunch yesterday, and it was so nice yeah. to actually like sit next to somebody and <laughs> look at them and not through a computer screen. And so I do think I, I but I do think that coming out of COVID, I think picking and choosing. Is, is much more valuable. I think that's good. Coming out of COVID, maybe you edit, maybe you edit how you come out of COVID to to come out of it in a make better- Make every minute count. Yeah, to make to, to, to come out of it better than you went into it with sort of maybe your acquaintances or you know people that might not uh, have the same energy as you want yeah. in this stage of your Agreed. life. Agreed. And what's your ideal dinner date? Ideal dinner date. I like when we go with like one or two other couples that I really like. I think that's really fun. Totally, I enjoy because, that. I mean- do but you imagine I think, if I had to sit in front of Rachel for two hours and just talk to her? I hope nobody believes his She'd nonsense. Like, Do you know what I've been saying to him for the last like 30 years now? Whenever he starts to sound like this, I look at him and go, stop trying to be cool. You know that kid in school who's like the sweetest person? And then as soon as their friends are next to them, they try to be like a total asshole. I don't think that and describes like, me at all. Oh my God, I really feel like you try to show off in front of your friends and then your friends go, nice try, Raj. I'm not showing off. Yeah, you're showing off. You're trying to make people think you're a jerk and you're not. I'm not a jerk. You are trying to be a jerk. So here's the answer. The answer is I like small dinners, no more than six. Unless it's a dinner party. I do too. I don't love big dinners. Or, or. But that's just because. If it's Roger and I, then, then I like someplace dark. 
I just like someplace dark and moody. I like someplace that's like feels different. And like, I like sitting in a booth. I like sitting away from people. Cause otherwise we've gone on date nights and ended up like sitting with 25 people that we ran <laughs> into, you know? Yeah. I think that I like when you give me diamonds on our date nights. Yeah. That's always a, that's always a good topic of discussion. You know what it is? I think that Rachel says that, but this is our problem with um, any sort of uh, dinner type situation is we literally, although we love the restaurants we go to, I th- I think we could try. Rachel's a very much. Uh, I'm a Virgo. Yeah, I don't so change. She doesn't change a lot. So I would say, I don't know, we've been to four restaurants in all of Los Angeles in I don't Not know, true. 17 years. Definitely seven. At maybe. least seven. Well, maybe seven. Anyway, but you get the, the point. So listen, don't fix it if it ain't broke. Well, it's a little broken for me, but that's okay. Now, this next group of questions is from Instagram. You've so, heard of that, Instagram? You know, that social media platform you've never heard of. Instagram. Instagram. Insta. So let's get started. At Chaycat, what's the worst names you've ever called each other? <sighs> How do we answer this, my friend? Um... Well, I'm going to take a stab at answering Honey, I think they mean like affectionate nicknames that might be embarrassing that like we look back and be like, how did I call you that? Like Mm. Boo Boo or like Nunu or like- I don't think you specify that. You know which one you brought out this year? You know which one you brought out this year? You You think it's pet? I I think you would have said pet names. I think you started calling me Angel this year over COVID. That was really nice. I know. I like Angel. You're my angel. Okay. Yeah. Rachel calls me babe mostly and- the worst names, like this is a thing. I'm a little crazy. So sometimes when I like someone, I insult them. But it, it's a form of endearment. No, but it's awful. So my highest form you of- You better not say what I, I won't think say, you're going to say. I won't say. say anything, but let's just say- Don't say any of the things that I think you're going to say. I'm not going to say where, but let's just say that sometimes I call Rachel names. We used to call each other bun. Yeah, what happened to bun? doesn't mm. work now. We have kids. It, it seems weird. It's cooked. Yeah. I think babe or honey. The funny thing is I like now, calling you love. But the funny thing it's is- It's like my love. I know. It's very like, um, what's that show you watch? Bridgerton. Oh. It's like, us, my love. Yeah. Or it's your grace. Do you want to, should I say your grace? If if you're saying that I'm royalty and I own your ass, yeah. You Call don't own grace. anything. You don't even Call own my house. Call me king. No. Okay. At Ang Creative- how do you navigate when good friends get divorced? Hmm. Thankfully for us, for the most part, there's been a very clear side to take. Well, what's really weird for us, and it's kind of, I hate to say it, Rach, but it kind of goes against what you said earlier. I do think you said, you know, your dad was like, hey, if you're not best friends, if you're not good friends with your spouse, you're never going to be together. Da, da. I think we've actually managed, I don't think that you're necessarily best friends with my friends wives you're friendly with them right but i think what that means is when there was ever a divorce it obviously was my friend that stayed because that's what we i'm saying never- there's a clear there's a clear answer of where we sit but also because there was a clear wrong doing well, on one side right and wrong is you know, there's no right or wrong when you're loyal to your friends but i think that i think what i, I think what's very strange about us versus a lot of other um, couples is we don't have a ton of like couple friends. I think some people are like, oh, it's our couple friend. It's our couple friend. It's our couple friend. It's our couple friends. Like we have some couples that we like, but like you have your friends. I have my friends. We, you know what I'm trying to say? And I think some people are like, they have their five couple friends. Like, oh my God, Margie and whatever got, are getting divorced. What do we do? We all go bowling every Saturday. And we don't have that. Right. I think if to translate Roger's insanity, it's basically what he's trying to say is that I have my super close friends and like Roger likes their other halves and we like their other halves. Roger has his like boys from literally when he was five and I like their wives, but like they live on a different coast. What he's saying is we don't necessarily have like 10 couple best friends that we travel with that we go everywhere with that like if someone broke apart we all have to like decide what side we pick which kind of happened with my sister and her divorce people definitely had to sort of choose a side and I think with us you're right we definitely have like separate and together friends we definitely have couple friends that we're close with but I don't think catastrophically but we do 
you know, I would say in one situation, there's a couple that we are close with both and we work with them and we're friends with them and they're in our lives. So that does happen. But I do think for me, navigating when close friends get divorced is there's usually a very clear wrongdoing, usually, that I've seen. What if they just fell out of love, Rachel? Then that's different. Then you don't have to take a side and you decide who you're closer with and who your allegiance is to. Because sometimes, honestly, in these days, like I have friends that are getting friendly divorces and they did just fall out of love and they're rooting for each other and they're both great parents and they go on to meet other people and life continues and that's fine. And I Sounds think, like an option. Trying to be cool again. Mm, None of our just, listeners think you're cool just, at all. Our next um, Instagram question is from someone who clearly <laughs> practices witchcraft. It's from an alchemy and sorcery. Ooh, what are some green flags in relationships? What's a green flag? I would imagine- is that like a, surrender? No, I imagine a red flag is like, you don't go. And a green flag, just using logic, would mean like, how do you know when to go further and like make the commitment maybe, or like, no, this is the one. And I think this goes back to the old fashioned, if you have to ask, the green flag is like, hey, I can't uh, stop thinking about this person. So that's probably the green flag <laughs> obsession. I would say red flag is like, if you have to try too hard, <laughs> run. Right. Because it's not if, if, if you have to force it, especially in the beginning, I actually was just saying this to... Uh, my nephew, <laughs> that if you have to try that hard, it's <laughs> definitely not right. Yeah, I think the green flag is you never see a red one. Yes, agreed. Wow, that was profound. <laughs> this is a great one. At Emily Foster Interiors. I really thought it said Aaron Foster. Um, why did you wait so long to have kids? Great question. And the reason is, is we both, neither of us were in a hurry I think both of us were workaholics, completely obsessed working on our careers. I think we kept saying, we're going to do this next year. We're going to do it next year. And then we woke up and it was like 18 years <laughs> since we started dating. And um, I think life just went by real fast. And we woke up and we're like, okay, now or never. And now I wish I had four. Yeah. I think ultimately- we were having fun. I think we're like a decade behind it, like most normal human beings. Yeah, we are. I just think we're like immature by a decade. I think we just weren't ready to like, yeah, we weren't ready to like face reality and like grow up and be responsible for other things. I mean, does it appear that I'm 53? Lately, I don't know. You got thin, so you look a little older. No, you no, always look like, really young. I feel I like you look old now. I know I do. But you're thin. You're in the best shape of your life. You got to use your muscle. face or your ass, but up, up. Um, anyway, so what were we just talking about? Why we waited so long to have children. Well, we waited so long to have children because-, because it's a lot of worrying. No, because stressing. first of all, because you're, because you're like, whatever. You're like so self-centered. What do you mean? You didn't want to have a kid. Why don't you tell the real truth? The real truth was like, I'm like, let's have a kid. You're like, okay, like next year. And I'm like, okay. I just want you to know that Roger's still not ready to have a kid. Well, we had them, but I know, but you're ready. still not ready. I'm a decade behind. <laughs> now you're yes. my child's ten. It's like he was just born. I'm starting to be really close. Yeah, you are. You're just starting that relationship right now with our children. It's going well. Whatever. Kids don't you know remember why? anything. They're basically fully independent Whatever. now, so he's ready to be a dad. My first memory was until I was five. Seriously, I, everyone's got. Okay, but guy's ten. So anyway, um, I think to be honest, we felt like we were kids ourselves, and we were having the best time. And I don't think we were ready to like stop only focusing on work and ourselves. Anyway, anyway. at Alexandra V. Miller, dating in 30s advice for anyone who's been super focused on career. Um, yeah, I think that you stay focused on your career because I think to attract a partner, the right partner, is someone who wants to date somebody who is driven, ambitious, and not so dependent on them. I think guys run. Most guys I know anyway run as soon as they see a girl just kind of like waiting, waiting to get and married, waiting to get married, and pining for the guy to like take care of her and whisk her away. It's just not. I think when you're dating in your 30s, you have to focus on you, figure out who you are. Do your life, the you happier do you. you are, the happier you are, the more attractive you'll become to someone else. But I will want to say Agreed. something. And again, I'm not a medical doctor, but- Or if, a relationship doctor. Or a relationship doctor. I'm really no doctor at all. 
But what's the opposite will, of a doctor? But I will say this: if you're in your 30s, and this is just something I came across, maybe you'll meet Mister Wright or Mrs. Wright or whatever the right gender is for your particular happiness. But the point is, if you're in your 30s, biologically, you kind of slow down. So what I would advise people to do that are in their 30s is like literally just take some eggs out so that you have healthy eggs and then take some of the pressure off. And that relieves a lot of things because you know it's not about the kid thing that you're not gonna be like, oh, pregnant, blah, 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 because you'll have, you'll have that on the side. And I think that certainly takes some of the pressure off and maybe even will help speed up the process in some random backwards way. So then it's not a rush. Mm -hmm. So that's my own advice. Okay. Okay. So we really do love hearing from you and we honestly really love hearing your stories. And this week we want to spotlight a story from one of our listeners that took her two voicemails to tell. So I've been in the fashion industry for over 20 years, and I think a lot of people assume that because of that, that I'm very critical, that I'm a judgmental person, that I'm focused on very shallow things. And, you know, they kind of assume that I'm checking them out and assessing them every time I see them. And actually, that couldn't be further from the truth. Anyone who really knows me knows that I'm pretty much the opposite. I'm definitely not judging you. And I really love to make fun of myself. <laughs> to celebrate pride in a very meaningful way, Vizzy Hard Seltzer created a label-less can to reinforce the beauty of loving our unique personal identity and living beyond pre-assumed labels. Really changing the narrative about yourself. The limited edition pack was created in partnership with the Human Rights Campaign, which is just one more reason to try Vizzy, the super refreshing hard seltzer with antioxidant vitamin C. Vizzy celebrates inclusion and has donated $1 million to the Human Rights Campaign over three years to support their fight for LGBTQ plus equality. It's true that there are plenty of hard seltzers to choose from, but with its bold and very delicious flavors, Vizzy makes the choice a whole lot easier. Vizzy flavors include pineapple mango, black cherry lime, blueberry pomegranate, and way more. They even have a lemonade hard seltzer in four delicious flavors like watermelon peach, raspberry, and strawberry, and they all feature antioxidant vitamin C from the acerola cherry, which is a super fruit. I'm personally very excited to try the watermelon peach lemonade hard seltzer because it sounds absolutely perfect for enjoying on a hot summer day all season long. Vizzy is an upgraded hard seltzer, so upgrade your hard seltzer today. To find out where you can purchase Vizzy's limited edition Pride packaging or any of their other refreshing flavors, go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash though. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash though. To get updates on our latest flavor drops and more, sign up for our emails at VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com backslash subscribe. You must be 21 and over to enjoy Vizzy. Happy Pride, everyone. Babe, you've hired people for our team, right? Of course. You have to do that when you're growing a business. Right. Well, okay. So what's your advice for anyone struggling to hire the right people? Well, I'd say they need to make their life a little bit easier by using Indeed. I totally agree. Indeed delivers one and a half times more hires than internal referrals, according to Talent Nest. And that's pretty hard to beat. And Indeed is the number one source of hires in the US, according to Talent Nest. Get your quality shortlist of candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description faster. Only pay for the candidates that meet must-have qualifications and schedule and complete video interviews in your Indeed dashboard. You can choose from more than 130 skills tests or add your own. Then add your must-have requirements so you only pay for applications that meet them. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent. Get started right now with a free $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash what works for us. Get a $75 credit at indeed.com slash what works for us. Indeed.com slash what works for us. Offer valid through June 30th. Terms and conditions apply. Hi, Rachel and Roger. My name is Kristen. I live in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. 
And I love, love, love your podcast. I wanted to share a bit of my love story. Um, I'm 42 years old, and my husband is 48. We just got back from our honeymoon in the Bahamas yesterday. Neither of us had ever been married before, and we don't have children. Um, so I was a professional musical theater performer and singer-songwriter for from the time I was 14 and all through my 20s. I lived in L.A. for 10 years, and I had, like, a catastrophic back injury in my mid-20s and kind of took me out of my dancing career, and I had to make some changes in my life. Um, So when I was 30, I moved to Phoenix, where my family lived, and I had never lived there before, and decided to go to college. So I went to Arizona State and got a bachelor's degree, and I had been in a long-term relationship uh, prior to moving to Phoenix, and decided that I wasn't going to date, and I was going to build a create a life for myself that was full of joy, and a life that if I lived the rest of my life alone without a partner, I would still have, like, this beautiful, fulfilling life. So I didn't date for, like, seven years, and I worked really hard on my career. Ended up becoming a social worker for children, specializing in trauma, and was really fulfilled, but I hated living in Phoenix. Um, I lived in the suburbs, and I met another girl um, who was also from L.A., and we were complaining about Phoenix, and she just said, you're doing it wrong. Like, you're out in the suburbs. You need to be downtown. And I said, okay. So she invited me to this music night in her neighborhood where all the local musicians come and hang out and share new songs. And so I said, okay, I'll go. So I went to this music night, and there was this man sitting on the front porch. And um, I just kind of said hi to him, and I was like, oh, who's this tall, hunga man? Um, And I ended up that night never going into the actual music night. Him and I sat out on the porch all night long, and he had a guitar, and he was a musician also, but had a real job too, and we ended up just, like, singing songs, Weezer on the porch all night long together, and just really hit it off, and um, I didn't get his number. My friend got his number, because we were like, this guy's so cool, we have to hang out with him again, and the next day I woke up, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to find that David guy, like, that was so much fun, and she was like, don't worry, girl, I have his number, so I ended up calling him the next day, and he wasn't expecting me to call, because he gave us number to my friend, but he was really excited, and he and he asked me on a date right away, and I hadn't been on a date in, like, seven years, and I was like, absolutely, um, so he took me out to drinks and dinner in downtown Phoenix, and our first date lasted, like, 36 hours, and we became best friends, and we started, we were dating other people, kind of still, um, but he didn't have kids, I didn't have kids, neither of us had been married, and we just developed this beautiful friendship and, and partnership. We started officially dating four years ago, actually today. We got engaged in January 2020, and we're like, this is our year, and plans to elope in Hawaii, and then the pandemic hit. Um, but we were able to make it to get married. We went last week, and we're married in Marco Island and went to the Bahamas. Um, and I guess I just – what I always tell people, what I want people to know um, – is, you know, create a life for yourself that's full of joy and beauty and having a partner in that life is just like the cherry on everything and it's so exciting. Like I, being, you know, in my early 40s and, and not having a partner and being in my 30s and not having a partner, it was tough and it was lonely, but I knew that I wanted a partner who was my partner for me and not just to have one. And I never gave up hope, but I built a beautiful life for myself. I just graduated with my master's degree and we'll be starting as a trauma therapist at a private practice next month. And now I have this partnership. Um, my husband has a small business. And um, I just I wish that women could get the message that um, don't be with someone just because you don't want to be lonely. Like find a way to fulfill your life and create a life of, of beauty for yourself. And when you do find that perfect person that comes along, it just enhances everything. So do you and, and work on yourself and create a beautiful life. And if you're lucky, and hopefully you'll have someone that comes along for you, but it's never too late. You know, I, I didn't graduate college until I was 37. I didn't start my career until then, and I didn't get married until I was 42. Um, and it was all worth the wait because I have everything that I ever wanted in my life and in a partnership. Cutie. That was one of the best phone calls I ever heard. Oh they God, were Roger's so, you know, well, first of all, so much i'm not crying you're crying so much knowledge and just so much knowledge in that yeah in, in that phone she's call. living it she's living it and it's sort of what we were saying to the last yep. voicemail is if you make yourself happy and beautiful your energy is such that you can attract someone that wants that other than changing your own self to fit into that other person's idea of what they want 
Because if you fit into that other person's idea of what they want, you're never going to be yourself and you're never going to truly. And we know a lot of people like that. Yeah. But what was also amazing, again, another pattern, they never made it inside the music venue. Yeah. They talked all night. Yep. Then it's they w- the never ending it's date. It's the never ending date. Yep. And that's that's the green that's the going common back, thread. That's the green flag as we talked about. The green flag is you I can't don't stop. You want to not be with that person. Yeah, you don't want to stop. So I think that was incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. What and an incredible our listeners. love story. I also want to note that she made it very clear that she did this very late in her life and that her love story started at 42. And I think well, it started that's at 38, be- but now she's married at 42, and, which is so beautiful. Yes. And it's never too late to be in love. And it's never too late to write your story or change your story, which we learned from mm-hmm. Lori Gottlieb. And I think that, um, you know, listen, Raj and I learn as we do this podcast as well. And that was an incredible story. Thank what a you good so story. Much. Yeah. I love her. I love her energy, by the way. And I also think all the women listening that are like, it's I'm so single, smart. I'm single. It's, it's what I was saying earlier. You do you. You work on yourself, and I promise the best and the rest will come, whatever that is. Agreed. So last thing, we have a surprise caller. Um, we do? I literally well, have no idea who it is. Well, do you know <laughs> who it is? Scared, no. Hey, Roger and Rachel. Just want Jay to know, Patrick. Jay. Like you know that my relationship ding, 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 ding. 40 years is going great. Aww. And to let you know that someone is indeed listening to your podcast. I'll let you guess who this is. Bye. You know, I like that because it verifies that at least one person listens to our podcast. That person was Jay Patrick. Jay is a longtime business associate of ours. I actually refer to Jay as our guardian angel or the godfather. But Uncle Jay. Uncle Jay, not by blood. He is, from where I sit, someone who has always looked after Roger and me through association, but now I have my own relationship with him as a friend and investor, but he's always really looked after Roger in hard times and in good times. Mm -hmm. But he was someone that was one of your mentors and bosses when you first started your career as an investment banker. Yep. And And again, because I'm an amazing person who holds on to people for a long period of time. And modest. uh, 30 years later, Jay is still in our life. And a wonderful person. Thank you, Jay, for calling in. Thanks, Jay. We love you, Jay. And thanks for listening because, you know, the fact is you have to listen to Roger almost every day. So the fact that you actually want to tune in and listen to more of Roger is, you know, that's admirable. I'm just it is saying. admirable. I have to do it by contract, you know, marriage contract. But anyway, so that was really fun. Um, if you want to share your own story or ask us a question, because, you know, We're not relationship experts, but, you know, we know a thing or two. Leave us a message at our new Works For Us hotline, 657-549-2251. And we might just share your story or answer your question on the show. Or, of course, follow us on Instagram at works.for.us. And you can leave a comment or question here. As is the case in each episode, we'd like to leave our listeners with a little highlight and low light from our week. In relationships, as you know, the bad comes with the good. So this is our time to mention a little bit of both those things. Um, Rach, you want to kick us off? Maybe a highlight or a low light of your week that you can share? I know my low light. My low light. And by the way, when she says low lights, I think you did get low lights this week, didn't you? No. Oh, you, you got get highlights? low lights. I mean, I guess you can get low lights, but like, I mean, yeah. I get Did you get highlights? No, I actually need some. Okay. Is that you referring to this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, now another low light. <laughs> For the first time in our 30 year marriage, my husband said to me the other day, as we were about to shoot just a little something for Instagram, no big deal. And I said, oh, we have to shoot this. And he goes, now? He goes, don't you need hair and makeup? He goes, you need to do it like that? And I was like, wow, 
Never. Normally, if I'm like, I have to go put makeup on, he's like, babe, you don't need makeup. You look great. So I actually had thought that I did a little bit of a touch up or like before we even like sat down. So it was a little, I was trying to figure out where he was going, but to me, that was like a direct hit. Cause this is the guy that's like, babe, you're the prettiest in the room, babe. You don't have to worry, babe. You're not getting older, babe. You don't need makeup. Babe. So now I just know you're kind of full of shit. No, I, if it makes you feel better, Rachel, I have a reason for that. Okay. Yes. I'd like to hear it actually. My eyesight's going and, <laughs> and I have been meaning to get, but then I should look better. I mean, you know, I, I'm, I need these glasses. No, you know what it is? No. It's like your beauty, because you're so perfectly angular in your beauty and your proportions that if you don't have perfect optical, it's like, why would you want to look at a beautiful piece of art through like a really blurry window or like, like even like, I know the Mona Lisa, they have that cover, but like, don't you want to see perfectly? And that's the thing, Rach, as my vision goes, you're getting more beautiful. I'm just getting further away. It's me, not you. Ugh. That was like the worst save ever. Like ever. I'm pretty proud of myself. Just so you know, it that one really hurt. It stuck with me for life. That was like literally really hurt. It's only because You know, honey, you since COVID, takes, I've it really, was really more of a timing thing. Like, oh, are you gonna you know, it's like I needed to know like how much time I had before I whatever. You know what? Let's move on. There's no way out. There's no way out. Just know it hurt. But anyway, my highlight, highlight, highlight. Highlight. Oh my God. Our boys got another belt in Taekwondo and that might've been the absolute cutest, but also most impressive thing that they just did a full belt test, like in sync, fully in sync, like 16 moves from memory. Like it was like a choreographed. It was the craziest thing I ever saw. And they did Taiga one and Taiga two. So it was actually two different choreographs. I like Tiger too. And amazing. they also counted to 10 in Korean, which was amazing. I agree. That was very cool. I was so impressed with that. I mean, to me, that was kind of the coolest I thing. I think that's a beautiful thing, a highlight. Just seeing our boys accomplish things, getting good grades or just writing a story or, you know, just doing anything that they're getting better at. Like Skylar's getting better at basketball. It's just so cute. Is it weird that I'm so used to your like sarcastic kind of asshole humor that like when you're actually saying things like this, I'm waiting for like the dig. I'm like, is he making fun of the kids right now? Is he saying that my highlights are too real? Well, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm waiting for the kicker. Like I'm waiting for like the, Hey, listen, 30, but I find it boring 30 years later, you know, when they say to keep things interesting, it's not just in one way. It's in every way. Just keep, keep them guessing. Keep them guessing. Okay. True or false? Keep him guessing. I don't know. You know, I don't like surprise. I'm a Virgo. All right. So your what's your high and low? So your highlight was our kids are good at Taekwondo, and your low light is your husband. Tell me, has terrible he was waiting. Eyesight. He was waiting for me to do hair and makeup when I already had it on. I think my highlight has to do with relationships. What do you think about that? I'm going to tie it back. My highlight is I actually I had a very fun day with people that I did not know prior to that day at all. Oh, yeah. And a friend of mine who I met- A friend of mine that you met. Uh, I knew him first. I mean, I guess so. I introduced you to him, remember? I mean, kind no, of. No, no, like fully. He said, I, I'm excited to meet Raj, and then I introduced you, so that means I introduced you. Well, but notice he said he was excited to meet me. But he hadn't met so you. So he was kind of using- But he hadn't met you, so no, I introduced you. So I, I actually knew him I first. I had like 20 me. conversations with him before you met him. User. Calm down. User. Okay. Anyway, I just met a few people. We played golf. Um, this person happens to be a pilot and we flew to San Diego and it was just like a very out of the blue, crazy day that I didn't expect. And it just, it kind of happened because I was like, sure. You know, I didn't. And cause your wife's awesome and was like, yeah, that day that you take the kids for a few hours on adventures, you can totally leave at eight in the morning and come home at 11 at night. Very drunk. Sure. Well, again, okay, move on. Yes, highlight. Well, well, you had no, a magical day. I had a magical day. And you by the did, way, and I'm so happy for you. Well, isn't it funny, <laughs> listeners, how Rachel was taking full credit for the introduction? It was. And that's yet, why I let him go because I actually did want him to go. Two sentences later, I was a little bitter. 
She was a little bitter about that. No, I was actually happy. Had that been one of your old friends, I would have been pissed off. Oh, yeah. But because it was a new friend that I liked and I actually really want you to hang out with really driven, ambitious, interesting people. Sadly, Andrew, we've now used all of your political capital and we can never see each other again. It was nice knowing you, Andrew. <laughs> Those were, it was a good day. Mm -hmm. See ya. All right. Low light. What was my low light? I thought about it. And did I share it with you? I remembered it and now I've forgotten it because, you know, I've been pretty upbeat these days. Life is kind of mm. going sort of well. My low light. God, what is the low light? Caius didn't know you went to Vegas. No, I don't want to. I don't want to obsess over my children, Rachel. There's more to my life than my children. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I thought my low light was going to be like I didn't break a hundred playing golf. Like that's really, really devastating, Rachel. Okay, so those are the things I want to talk about. That and you share. flew uh, on a plane to go play golf for the day and you didn't break a hundred. Well, it was quite windy, Rachel. Okay, I'll have. You I know. Let's just have that be your low light, then, friend. All right. Okay. How about it's going to be a similar light. When the plane landed and I knew I was going home. Ugh, you know, again. <laughs>